Welcome to Straight Up Reviews, where there's no bullshit beyond the sign. This is another on my haven't seen until now but heard a lot about list. Before I tell you about this movie, I wish to talk about a little genre called tech noir. While probably not as where to begin with, this particular word I first heard by James Rolfe, aka the Angry Video Game Nerd. It defines a sci-fi movie, specifically ones that involve robotics or other futuristic tech, but with a film noir aka gumshoe style mystery setting. He himself got the name from a fictional bar of the same name in the first Terminator movie, in which it was first coined. However, there has been a lot of movies surrounding the premise, such as I, Robot, and Alien. This particular one predates Terminator, but I believe embodies the noir setting more than the tech. The tech being more or less incidental. This is Blade Runner. Based off the book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, who is also responsible for such sci-fi classics as Total Recall and Minority Report, it is directed by Ridley Scott of Alien fame and in one of Harrison Ford's first major roles outside of the Star Wars and Indiana Jones. This movie has been revised and re-released so many times that I don't even know which version I watched, and odds are I might get into a flame war over it, but alas, I shall do my best to offer my critique. The setting goes like so. Los Angeles, 2019. In this particular future, a race of genetically engineered organic robots are created, called replicants. Said replicants are designed to look as human as possible, with a few exceptions, specifically superior strength and lack of developed emotions. They were created for the sole purpose of either handling dangerous tasks, slave labor, or leisure, all of which happens in off-planet colonies. It is illegal to have said beings on Earth. Any replicants caught on Earth are destroyed or retired by a police force known as the Blade Runners. Our story follows Rick Deckard, played by Ford. A former Blade Runner and now a detective is hired back against his will to hunt down four replicants that made it onto Earth after one of them kills hold in another Blade Runner. The replicants are led by a Nexus 6 class known as Roy Batty. Their motivation is to seek out Tyrell who created the replicants in order to have their limited lifespans extended. As Deckard investigates, he meets a woman named Rachel, who he discovers is an experimental model. This particular model is designed to have memories and emotions like a human. This in turn causes Deckard the same doubts that a cosmic quit being a Blade Runner in the first place. The movie bombed on its first release, but developed a cult following. Much of its bombing reasons were that it was competing with The Thing, Another Bomb, and E.T. as well as Star Trek II. The other reason was that critics were literally split between whether or not this was a masterpiece or complete crap. Much of the anti-parts of the polarization stem from scenery porn outweighing story and slow pacing. In my opinion, it's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of greats. While there is an all-star cast, I'm going to focus on the main three. Ford, as Deckard, starts out as his usual role, the sarcastic, troublemaking rogue of a hero, but all-around good guy. However, he shows a side you rarely see in his action roles. Much of the reason why Deckard quit being a Blade Runner in the first place was because he was one of the few that saw it as killing regardless of species, and it shows. Each kill he made in the movie haunts him, even though he's a seasoned killer. I've often heard that Ford, in real life, doesn't like the violence most of his characters are involved in. If that's the case, Deckard is the perfect role for him because, aside from the kills, which haunt him nonetheless, he's pretty much playing himself, giving a more realistic performance. Plus, any actor that works well, even if they don't like the crew they work with, just shows how good they are. With Rutger Hauer as Roy, I didn't know what to expect. I've seen him play evil before as Earl and from Batman Begins, Cardinal Rourke from Sin City, and Morgan Edge from Smallville, all of which were unsympathetic assholes that deserve what they got. However, in this, I never expected to sympathize with Roy Batty. At first, I saw him as a soft-spoken, intelligent, sadistic killer. But when Roy started developing emotions he couldn't comprehend, I felt sorry for him. He wasn't hammy until his final confrontation with Deckard, which is understandable since when death is on the line, Sandy, even in a machine, is gone right out the window. Then there's Sean Young as Rachel. I gotta admit, I only seen her in one role, that specific role being Lois Einhorn in Ace Ventura, and I was hesitant in seeing another role of hers, especially after hearing about the incident she had with Tim Burton. However, after watching this, I wish I saw more of her work. 
Her reaction to realizing she's a replicant looked like the equivalent of somebody telling her she had a terminal disease she never knew about. And her emotional state, even for a machine, is understandable. She is sad at first, thinking everything she remembered was all a lie, and then scared that the man she loves may one day hunt her down. But in the end, she accepts not only her new life, but her once concealed emotions that came with it and becomes a factor in Deckard's own life in more ways than one. The scenery and effects are, even now, way ahead of their time. But they don't outweigh the story as much as one thinks. It embodies all you see in a noir picture. Having a gumshoe for Deckard, a femme fatale for Rachel, and a sympathetic criminal in the form of Ray and his fellow replicants. Even the music has a bit of a digital jazz theme going on sometimes. It also dives into the standard but still great sci-fi territory, such as why killing replicants haunts Deckard as he is one of the few in the movie to question what measures non-human, as well as Rachel exploring emotions she couldn't comprehend at first, such as love. Then we have Roy, when he finally does get used to his emotions, he fears death mainly because, like most robotic characters before and after him, he questions whether or not he has a soul to go to heaven or hell. Then there is outside the story, the cult following. They come up with their own interpretations of the film, such as the ongoing question, is Deckard a replicant? Even the makers of the film come up with their own viewpoints. Philip originally wrote Deckard as a human in the novel. Hampton Fancher, one of the screenwriters of the movie, said that Deckard is human, but wanted to fool the audience into thinking that he was a replica with hints such as a unicorn or origami. Ridley Scott, on the other hand, thinks that Deckard is a replicant a statement that was countered by Harrison Ford, whose reasons were that he felt that the audience deserved a human being that other replicants could establish an emotional relationship with. As for myself, when I first heard about Blade Runner's premise, the first thing I asked was if Ford's character was a replicant. Before I draw my conclusion, I would like to offer two viewpoints. The first is that Deckard is a replicant. It makes sense that a replicant would be good at hunting other replicants. However, the downside is it makes Deckard be the biggest villain of them all, as he's hunting down his own kind, whether he likes it or not. The second viewpoint is that Deckard is not a replicant, which makes sense too, because while it's his job to hunt him down, he considers it slaughter, be it human or replicant, and when he falls in love with Rachel, they pretty much become a bridge between humans and replicants. Kind of like how when the Capulets were waging wars against the Montagues, one of their youngest managed to get along with the other. Only this one doesn't end in tragedy. After careful thinking, I'm siding with Ford and Dick on this one. I don't think a replicant would hunt down their own for a living emotions or not. As usual, debate, argue, and let me know what I missed. Stay tuned for more. Until then, I shall say a repeat of the Tears in the Rain soliloquy. Written by Howard himself, said by his character Roy Batty. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulders of Orion. I've watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the town Hauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time, like <coughs> tears in rain. Time to die.